Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. There it is, a very beautiful premium jet bomber, the Vautour de A IDF AF. I hope that pronunciation in French was acceptable, if not, <laughs> tough. Uh, <laughs> um, I love bombers, I'm a bomber enthusiast, I really want to get the most out of them, jet bombers, prop bombers, heavy bombers, light bombers, medium bombers, everything that is not an attacker or a fighter has always my interest. And so the the first visual impression is I absolutely love it. I love the very big jet engines. I love the overall shape and um, proportions of the plane. But that is a personal opinion like that I also like the skin. What about the performance, which is obviously, um, you know, a part of the decision if you want to buy this plane because it's premium or not. And you might have already seen them. There are four air-to-air -air missiles mounted under the wings and the Tech 2 version doesn't have them. So that's always a little bit of a bitter taste. Um, they have actually, if we look at the stats very briefly before we go into some interesting gameplay, the very same stats as the AIM-9 Beast that you get even as low as 7.7 these days because Gaijin really needs money it seems like. And again, in good old tradition, they just throw every sort of balance out of the window for the quick money grab. Okay. With that out of the way, um, what are the traits of this plane in a nutshell? Well, it's a premium bomber and you kind of get the experience um, or the taste like the Arado C3 or also to a certain degree the R2Y2s, but with additional air-to-air -air rockets. So the plane is fast, it spawns at the bomber altitude and it can surprise a lot of the enemies before they have reached altitude. It can just disturb the enemy's um, climbing path, if you will, and just distract the enemies. It can either bomb the bombing points or try to go into a fight. However, there is one final thing that I want to point out in the hangar before we go into the gameplay and that is that I do that I do not buy the expert qualification as you can see. Not just in pure desperation of saving money, but there is a good reason for it. Obviously getting the expert qualification, which I usually recommend if you want to be uh, as competitive as possible uh, without spending money, um, there is not really a use for it. It is 1.3 million silver lines. That's quite a hefty price. And there you can see it's plus three to G tolerance, stamina, etc. It would really benefit the pilot. But the pilot doesn't need it because the plane only can pull seven Gs and that only for a limited amount of time before the wings just snap. So this is a massive drawback to the overall plane's performance. It's fast, it can be funny, but it's too dependent on the map. So it is really down to your own preferences if this is a true candidate for buying or not buying. And having said this, before I talk about anything more about this plane, let's hop into some gameplay and let's see how it goes under the best of circumstances and if I'm right with the seven Gs. So let's begin here with the very first battle that I played and in good old tradition I tested the aircraft. I tested what are the limits, what can you do and um, how does it do on this map. And yeah, it depends really on the size of the map and if the rest of your team also has an air spawn. MiG-19 in a head on and... I don't know where he got that shot off but okay. So now this is a very short battle from the very start to the very end and I just want to show you the power of disturbing. So what I mean is you just take on speed from the very start at altitude, you go into a slight dive and you just run through the enemy team. So they might be scared, they just try to pull off evasive actions, they just uh, try to turn fight with you and also they try to follow you. And that just rips the blob of the enemy team apart without really firing a shot. Also, there are not that many planes that really can catch you if you just fly through them. So only if a MiG-19 or something like this 
decides to hunt you down, you have just not a very long life expectancy. The other thing is that those are the top fighters of the enemy team. So your team has now in theory a bigger chance of having an impact on the outcome of the enemy team. You reduce the amount of effective fighters that there are. So here the path was not optimal, but it is uh, one of the first times that I tried it. And let's see how it goes. Okay, so I light up where the enemy fighters are for my team. This is now uh, intelligence data that my team you know needs to process needs to get an advantage out of and I just try to fly through try to light them up as good as possible and let's see if somebody really wants to engage me that MiG-19 looks like yep so a little bit of evasive actions nothing too crazy we just stay under a thousand kilometers per hour and uh, that is just really difficult to catch for the enemy team. So this is now a disadvantage that I catch the MiG-19. And before I go into the real killing, I think this is a very important lesson to learn. So the video is going to be a bit longer, but this is a very important example that I just want to give you and um, just point out that this is not something uh, truly like an R2Y2, but here you can see extreme overload, seven Gs. I ripped previously. I yeah, didn't record it, sadly. And uh, let's see if you can shake this MiG-19. And then obviously there is always the danger of those air-to-air -air missiles. So I try to spool up here the system. And yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. That would be epic. Oh, come on. Uh, oh, come on. Oh, what a shame. But you could see, this is also a danger. And then there is a MiG-15 coming in, uh, if I read correctly. Yep. And so I have them in a position where, obviously, they will kill me. There is no doubt about this. But I doubt that they, have, um, that they can do this within the next minute. So they need to invest energy. They need to invest time. Here I ripped my flap because of skill. He had no interest in a head-on because obviously I field four 30 millimeter cannons. Um, they are uh, five five ones with 400 rounds. So 100 rounds per gun. You can run through them extremely quickly. So he has now to dodge to um, avoid this missile. The MiG-15 again tries to bleed your energy. And yeah, he doesn't want to get in front of me. Let's try to lock on this guy again. But now there is the G91. He seems to have taken damage. I have I have no intention to survive this. So, yep, we got him. And now I did my job. I distracted two enemy fighters. I killed one. Um, the one of their top players is just distracted. This is one of those things that you can do with this plane. And they just need to spend so much time getting me. Now this is a calculated risk, okay? This is just an example. This is not the way how you should play this plane, right? This is just an example of what you can do if you are in a desperate situation, if you are just um, in the wrong matchup and you want to support your team. Now finally, let's get on with the firepower and the killing. A little bit of a kill compilation, a little, little bit of um, some situations that are even more exciting. I have no idea how I got this kill, <laughs> but I take it. And so, yeah, the 430 millimeters that are very, very dangerous. Um, they probably hit or one hit everything. I use the air target belt, so it's half high explosive and half the fragmentation rounds. Um, I think they do the job. So never get in front of this plane. Here I furthermore then try to help here my team out. Slow flying enemies, there's just absolutely no problem. To get the rockets to work, that is a bit of a tricky thing. And so I have here one battle where I show you now the usefulness, not just only for killing, but also tactical purposes. And this is now a battle where I just was side climbing a little bit. And I hope 
for the best. I hope for the enemy team to not hunt me down immediately. It is about positioning this plane as a, yeah, vulture. That's that's literally the name, vulture, in uh, French. And this is not a frontline fighter. Sure, you can make the rushes. You can make also the head-ons. But this is not what the plane does best. It is just more of a cleaning up, um, helping your teammates, using the speed. You do those long sweeps through the enemy lines and then just try to run away whenever it is possible. Uh, you never try to fight a one versus one. And here we have the first candidate, and that, he escaped my guns. And there you can see how sluggish the handling is. But this G91, well, I don't have the very best firing angles. Um, upside down and that's this is why I used here the air-to-air -air missile and great success we saved our good strong comrade and he now lives on to have more impact on the overall gameplay the same scene or a slightly different scene is here um, where I thought now okay it is now on me you can see that the missiles just won't lock on up until yeah, under 4 kilometers when then the heat signature is also big enough. I cancel here the spooling up of the system and re-spool it up. It always has a timer. And this CL-13, I'm not really confident with my guns. And that was a beautiful hit. <laughs> Can we get this G91? Nope, we can't. Now the tactical use is that it is a big big distraction and can get also enemies off the tails of your friendlies. It is very very difficult to then also not team kill by accident. It is a possibility. Remember friends, after an air to air missile is launched it doesn't really distinguish between the sun, a reflection of the sun or the chat signature of an enemy or a friendly chat. So here in this scene, uh, the MiG-15 is on the tail of a friendly F-100. He is way out of the gun range and the missile, well, I tried to kill him, but now he had to do some evasive actions and that now leaves the F-100 uh, to fight on for uh, another few minutes. And we actually, because of those actions, won the game. Just barely, but we did it. And uh, yeah, let's have a quick look at the results. Can I get him? Nope. Limitation to the cheese. Okay. So he escaped. But I did my job here. So let's have a brief look at the results. And uh, yeah, for two kills, 53,000 silver lines, uh, some extra backups. Eh, that's okay. 16,000 vehicle research points with no booster. And that now is the game that I wanted to show you. So the French war flag is deployed. <coughs> you know cheap chokes are for free on this channel. We use again here the high altitude spawn for bombers, three and a half kilometers in this case on this map. I want to transfer some of the potential en energy into kinetic energy, so transferring altitude into speed and just see if I can rush the enemy team and surprise maybe one or two AFK players. Again, disturb their flying patterns, being a distraction, maybe one or two try to follow me, then they see that they are not able to do so, they again turn around, but then they have lost the connection to the rest of their team. The enemy team is then scattered. The enemy team might have been, um, might have lost already one or two players. And so I think a lot of the people are not really comfortable playing this plane in that matter. But I think it is optional to play this as a bomber. Um, I want to bring the fight to the enemy. The question is, is this unfair? Is this something that the plane should not do? Do you remember the outcry when the first Voiture de A was introduced, so the tech tree version, and uh, it was just like the R2Y2 experience all over again? Yeah, because of scenes like this. Player didn't adapt, but at the end of the day it was unfair, and it still is an unfair advantage. What remains is the question, what is left after you have uh, blasted through the initial energy advantage that you have. Well, first of all, you must not waste it. You do those long sweeps through the enemy team. You just try to 
um, not lose your energy. And while a MiG-19 uh, or F-100D and other planes are faster than this one in the long run, they first don't have to build up that energy and this is the initial advantage if you can use it and if you are fighting not constantly 10.0s which you don't so i think this is not a victim of the former 8.0 meta uh, that was a very long range shot and uh, yeah sadly the g91 maneuvered so no kill there but i try my best to continue to scatter the enemy team to be a distraction so the G91, I cannot get guns on him, so I even don't try. I, um, you know, cool off here the air-to-air -air missiles. And then obviously flying solo, you are a massive bait for CL-13's A. That's my allied... Uh, oh wait, there are German teams. Oh, the shame, the shame. But yeah, that was a tactical kill caused by me. He wanted to get guns on me, a little bit of dodging, and he got greedy. He couldn't pull out of this dive. And uh, yeah, it's not a kill for me, but it's again one player of the enemy team down. A shame that you don't get any sort of reward for it. And don't come at me and say, oh, winning the game and then just having a better income is the uh, reward, right? Yeah, if you don't kill anything, you don't have much of the win for your team. So uh, I, I want to get a little bit of a of a result maybe to drop this in a pool of civil lines and rp of crashed people um, obviously then german pilots uh, prop planes would get even more um, profit and would grind even faster through the tech tree if then this pool would be equally distributed across the winning team okay enough rambling let's see what we can do so there is again a lot of action at lower tiers there are quite a few on this MiG-15. There are two G91s. Let's see if we can uh, if we can disturb their plans here. He pulls in, and yeah, I have here a little bit of a problem with the last second adjustments to the flying paths. So it is sluggish. It is limited to pulling seven Gs, but again, therefore you don't need to spend. Um, the expert qualification that saves you 1.3 million talking here about the income um, I think it's good I think it is all right here in this in this case 2.4 times 2.0 reward for the civil lines and a clear 2.0 modifier for the RP this is as good as it gets for planes in RRB that is so I'm totally fine with this for RRB it is a fun plane and look at this uh, rocket yeah he turned uh, not sharply enough he tried to corkscrew again this g91 just escapes and this g91 then soon gets finished by my team sadly i don't get into range for that kill but hey i have now made quite a significant impact on the outcome of the match didn't i and again we just simply zoom away from this g91 and I see that now he is distracted after this head-on with the F-86. And the question is if he can turn around in time. There you can see how the plane just wobbles around without any sort of damage. And now I don't care about it. Let's just spray the guns. Yep. Look at my skill. My skill is amazing. <laughs> Three kills like that. So that's the end of the match. What is now my opinion on this plane? Well, I think it is not the worst implementation into the game. It catches people by surprise, but people will and can adapt to it. Um, you can easily avoid the missiles if you're aware of them. Just a little bit of maneuvering and they just can't follow you. But the tactical use of this plane and the diversity of um, usage, I'd say, is not really that bad. And we get even the mission maker for that. What a coincidence, right? First kill, an air-to-air -air kill, a tactical kill, and on top of this, the final head-on kill. Let's see what this gives us. And yep, 85,000 civil lines and uh, nearly 13,000 vehicle research points. I think that is a good result. Um, it's not a bad plane, I have to say it, but I guess it's not for everybody. It's not a serious player in that regard. It cannot really fight on a one versus one, but in a team effort match, 
this is probably a very very good support uh, aircraft as you could see that's it for me today i hope you enjoyed this video please give it a like if you did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the waves on the battlefields and in the skies of war thunder